Hello, and welcome to my presentation. My name is Dr. Brian G. Rubrecht. I am a professor at Meiji University in Tokyo, Japan. The title of my talk today is Taking Attendance at University, Some Thoughts Brought on by COVID-19. Now, let me uh, preface this uh, talk by saying that I've written a lot of things on slides because I'm not sure uh, how well people will be able to uh, view this video. And also, I will try to talk a little quickly because I don't want the video to be too long. Uh, so here is my introduction slide. I'm going to be talking about uh, taking attendance. This is something that few people uh, really think about. At pre-tertiary levels like elementary school, uh, junior high school, high school, taking attendance is fairly, uh, it's a fairly standard practice. Um, but at the university level, it really depends on your location. It depends on the purpose uh, for taking attendance. And since we've entered uh, the pandemic in 2020, and um, we're dealing with COVID-19, and things like social distancing, this has really brought uh, attendance to the forefront. So today, what I want to talk about are really uh, three things. Uh, the impetus for this presentation. I want to talk about some background information uh, regarding attendance, some things that uh, people might not be aware of. And I want to give some uh, uh, talk about some attendance taking methods that people might want to use uh, if they decide uh, they want to take attendance uh, at university. So uh, to talk about the impetus for this talk, uh, the coronavirus pandemic uh, in March uh, on March 11th, 2020, this is when the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 to be a global pandemic. Now, the reason that I'm interested in talking about attendance is because I teach at a Japanese uh, university. The school year over here begins in April and it goes to March. So the regular school year starts right after uh, this declaration of the pandemic. So uh, at the beginning of 2020, um, we had to shift back the start of our academic school year. It was pushed back, most universities pushed back to the second week of May. So once we heard that uh, we're going to be social distancing, we're going to be uh, working and teaching online, by the end of March, uh, there was this frantic move. Everyone is trying to get their lessons and online and uh, prepare to teach remotely. This meant that uh, we instructors, we had about six weeks of preparation time but we had about four weeks to set up our syllabi so that students would know which classes they wanted to take. And of course, on the syllabi, we had to talk about attendance. So the question became, well, what do we do about attendance when we are doing remote teaching and learning? Now, you should know that attendance is typically required at a Japanese university uh, universities at the uh, the uh, upper levels so um, language classes also um, they tend to be relatively strict in terms of attendance so having uh, an understanding of what we're going to do uh, about the topic of attendance is something that we had to decide uh, relatively quickly even though we were not really sure what we were going to be doing in terms of attendance. Now, uh, the views on attendance, um, the researcher, uh, me, I had participated in some online sessions before uh, the beginning of the 2020 academic school year. 
what I was doing, I was practicing with Zoom, I was working with other teachers, we were sharing lesson ideas, we were trying to find online workarounds for the different ways that we did our classes, and of course the question of attendance came up, and I was very surprised. Teachers were very split on what they were going to do regarding attendance. The no camp, the, the, the teachers who said, I'm not going to take attendance, they said, nope, it's a crazy time for everybody. Uh, there are more important things that, that they could be doing with their time instead of taking attendance. They just wanted to simplify things. That's very understandable. The yes camp, the teachers who wanted to take attendance, well, their, a lot of their reasoning was they wanted to ascertain who is actively enrolled in the classes because you're not face-to-face -face with students. There's no physical presence that indicates attendance. Taking attendance remotely could show uh, teacher-student connections when uh, engaged in remote teaching and learning because this shows some monitoring. It shows that whatever presence online is, it's still presence and it's valued. Hopefully it would instill motivation to engage and participate because the teachers, the instructors were actively assessing if students were engaged in the lesson. And A, attendance. Attendance is traditionally expected at Japanese universities and it's typically uh, institutional policy that um, instructors are uh, expected to take student attendance. Now this emergency remote teaching that we were all engaged in in 2020, it spurred a revisit of attendance, the topic of attendance for me and others. Now before going through uh, my discussion, please keep in mind that, remember, the teachers were very split, the teachers uh, teaching in Japan. We had a very limited time to decide if we were going to take attendance or not, and there was no university-wide policy um, where I teach and in other academic institutions about what to do about attendance. And basically attendance uh, what to do about attendance it was decided unilaterally uh, by each individual teacher now here's some background uh, looking at the literature about uh, attendance well attendance of course it is valued in principle at university there are exceptions and um, I'll probably talk a little bit about this later, but of course, if there are students who come to classes who are not engaged, if they cause disruptions, then probably the instructors would rather not have that student show up if their goal is not to actually learn in the classes. But of course, um, instructors want their students to come to class, they want them to engage in lessons, etc. All right, the uh, emergency remote teaching, like I explained, showed varied opinions about attendance, and this is really nothing new. If you look at the literature, there is little consensus about the effects of attendance um, on learning. There are mixed results in the literature. Uh, regarding correlations of attendance with things like course content comprehension, information retention, motivation, overall academic achievement, and I've listed here a few um, uh, references uh, that I found in the literature. Yeah, they, they don't all agree on the impact that attendance itself has on uh, these kinds of things here. Now, the current concern is, well, why take attendance at university anyway? Well, there are differences across the globe and at all different levels. Typically in the West, attendance is not mandatory. Of course, there are some courses where uh, instructors 
do take attendance. There are probably reasons for that, but typically, um, and I'll talk about this in, in just a minute, there are reasons why uh, in the West, uh, university instructors would not take attendance. In the East, however, for example, in the case of Japan, taking attendance at university is typical, and things like tardiness, um, late students, um, their, their uh, punctuality for classes may be included um, when taking attendance. Now, of course, these are just generalizations. There are differences between universities or departments within universities or for uh, courses and of course between different instructors. Now here I'm going to first give some reasons against taking attendance at university. Most of these reasons um, you could probably say that a lot of instructors in Western universities uh, they probably would accept and agree with a lot of these reasons. Number one, university students should be treated as adults. Again, this is probably what uh, a lot of Western uh, instructors would agree with. Students should be considered as, a, a, as adults or they are nearly adults. Instructors are not the students' parents. They're, they're not supposed to be uh, checking that each student is doing what they're supposed to be doing. So attendance is, is basically viewed as a given, especially if the students are uh, taking out student loans. It's their own money they're going to have to pay back. They should probably show up to class, right? Make it worth their while, make it worth their money. So they should display uh, things like maturity and responsibility by attending class whenever it's possible. Number two, university instructors should focus their energies on teaching. And this is very much related to number one. Instructors should not be spending their time calling roll, checking to see which students are there. If the students are considered a as being adults, then instructors should spend their time and their energy doing things like preparing for lessons, actually teaching, giving feedback to students on their progress in the courses, give them guidance, etc., etc., etc. So taking attendance, dealing with attendance, marking students present, absent, etc., it really detracts from what university instructors should be doing. Number three, attendance does not guarantee that students are learning. So physical presence does not necessarily equate to mental presence. Not being mentally present uh, in a course, it will reduce learning and, and it will also uh, reduce opportunities for learning. Like I said before, uh, Sperber had said that students who come to class they are attending but they are not engaged in the lessons they are distractions uh, in the lessons because they might attend but they sleep or they play on their smartphones or they just generally tune out those students are not um, participating as they should in the lessons number four attendance assesses one thing while grades assess something else entirely. So good attendance. Good attendance means what? Is it an indication of aptitude or diligence or effort? It's very difficult to uh, pinpoint what attendance is really supposed to mean. There are no definitive correlations to things like grades or subject mastery or academic outcomes, etc like I explained previously when talking about the literature. Sometimes attendance just means you have a warm body in a seat. And Quinona's 2014 actually says, taking attendance doesn't make students learn, it just makes them present in the class. So I can see why some instructors might not be interested in taking attendance. Number five, taking attendance is a waste of class time. Again, 
um, teachers, instructors are in the classroom to teach. So it's a waste of time, especially for large classes. It can be a very much a, um, a time and logistics challenge if you are an instructor and you are teaching a class of 200, 300, 400 students. So again, this detracts from instructors teaching during class time. Of course, you could have things like seating charts or using ID scanners uh, to take attendance. When students enter classrooms, they can uh, scan their ID card, etc. But of course, these are not foolproof. There are ways that uh, students could be marked present when they are actually not. Okay, and a little later in this discussion, I will talk about some possible workarounds um, for taking attendance like this. All right, I have six and seven here on the same slide. Number six, don't punish the bright students. Some instructors are of the belief that, well, some students can pass without coming to class regularly, and that's fine. This makes attendance for those uh, students unnecessary and some students possibly they study better alone <clears throat> if a course has the material set up for the students to learn if they don't have to go to the class to learn the material they can learn it on their own and they pass the class they understand the information presented through the course then what's the reason for them to attend lectures and number seven, some students learn best when learning the hard way. So students at university, they're often very young. <clears throat> they are still exploring the world. They're exploring themselves. Just telling students to come, please be present. Sometimes that doesn't work. Sometimes for some students, they have to take several semesters or years of classes they're not showing up they're getting bad grades it takes those bad grades they're they're uh, realizing these results from not attending they might think wow i got a d in that class i only attended five lectures maybe i need to buckle down and not sleep late and miss my classes i need to pick myself up. Let them figure out on their own where they're making mistakes so that they can improve. Sometimes just telling them is not enough. Okay, now <clears throat> the reasons for taking attendance. Number one, taking attendance has been and continues to be a customary practice. So for some, university is simply a continuation of um, education. Attendance had meaning uh, at pre-tertiary levels, right? It teaches and stresses things like discipline and responsibility. Um, attendance at pre-tertiary uh, levels like elementary school, junior high school, etc. There attendance is used to pinpoint students whereabouts you don't want uh, young children to not go to school they go somewhere else they get in trouble etc we want to know where our young students are at university it might be the same we want to know that our uh, students our children if you're a parent that they're actually attending classes. So taking attendance can show students that they are accountable for um, doing what they are supposed to be doing. Their job is technically is to be a student. And of course, this is important if they're using their parents' money. The parents want to make sure that the students are attending class. And so all of these uh, taken into consideration, it looks like attendance likely retains at least some level of merit. Number two, attendance leads to punctual assignment submission. If students are sporadic in their attendance, that means that they're probably sporadic in their assignment submission. Many classes are quite progressive. For example, 
uh, writing classes. What is learned in one lesson is the foundation for what is learned in the next lesson. And this is something that Wax 1993 discusses. So if there's no timely submission of assignments, of homework, that means that the students are not uh, keeping up with the lessons. They will start to fall behind. Uh, this will probably mean more work for the instructor. They will have to take that student aside, <clears throat> explain some lesson information, maybe explain uh, different homework assignments, etc. That student's going to have to catch up if they're missing lessons, um, uh, especially without a good reason. So partly the end of the semester grade for those students, you're partly assessing catch-up ability. Can the student fall behind and then catch up? Well, that's not really the point of the classes, of the lessons of the course. And uh, in the end, the learning might be less robust for those students who are not attending regularly. And that's pretty much a shame. Number three, the difficulty or general nature of a course is such that mastery requires attendance. And this is very much related to uh, the previous number two. Think about writing courses, as I mentioned, or foreign language courses. So for example, week eight's lesson is built on week seven's lesson. If you are absent uh, on week seven, well, then you're not going to understand when you come to week eight's lesson and start learning that material. You, there's a big chunk of information that you don't understand. Uh, Rob, 1993, he long ago talks about strict attendance of policies, how they encourage the following of course material as lessons progress. And this makes a considerable amount of sense. Number four, students mistakenly think that university is the time when they can relax. This is uh, particularly a, a case in Japan, right? Students, all they're thinking about is getting the credits. They just want to pass. They're waiting to start their work life. University for them, it's uh, more about uh, making interpersonal connections, joining um, groups on campus, etc., which is fine. This is not unusual in Japan and it happens elsewhere. But in Japan, university has often been labeled four-year vacations. Students often feel liberated from their studies because they're, it's typically more difficult to enter university in Japan uh, than it is to graduate because they have their entrance exam um, period when they're trying to enter university that difficult time is over mcveigh 2002 says that this uh, leads to a culture whereby university education is often seen as just paper education or simulated education it's the the students did well enough to get into the university that means that they have enough uh discipline and understanding of facts and figures that, okay, the four years is just a time for them to uh, gain some uh, ancillary uh, knowledge and skills because once they get on to a company, the company is going to tell them what they need to know, what they need to do to succeed in that company. And sometimes companies don't want them to keep too much information that they had learned previously because they're going to train the students themselves. Number five, attendance is part of students' grades in a course. Now, this is probably not advisable, but it does happen. Um, instructors will take attendance and, punctu and check punctuality and give participation grades, and that's not really related to course material. Language courses at Japanese universities, typically it's a, a two-thirds attendance policy, meaning if students miss more than one-third 
of their courses in a semester, then they are ineligible to receive course credit. So students, well, they generally like getting grades for attendance. All they have to do is show up. This has been found by McVeigh, and I have done some research as well, finding that students do like getting grades for attendance. Why? Well, the students uh, are of the view that as long as I show up and have good attendance grades, if I happen to get a, a poor quiz grade, I, I bomb a quiz or I forget to turn in a homework assignment, then my good attendance will offset uh, those poor grades. Number six, it reassures vested parties that there is instructor-student contact. Now, this is mostly for parents, but I have found after a year of teaching remotely because of the pandemic, current students, they see the value in uh, physical uh, instructor-student contact in the classroom. Being uh, in the presence of the instructor, they're immediately available to answer questions, uh, for example. Um, so to have uh, take attendance uh, gets students into the classroom in typical situations. And number seven, very self-explanatory. Accurate course reviews and teacher evaluations require high levels of attendance. If a student only shows up five or six times to a course in a semester that meets 15 times, well, they've only shown up about a third of the time. Can they accurately give a course review? Uh, can they accurately say what kind of teacher the instructor is? Not so much. Okay, so attendance does help in this regard. My number eight here, holistic teaching means teaching people, not just content. So of course, teachers are teaching uh, some kind of a content in the class, but teaching even at university, it's still an opportunity to move students into society. By teaching students in, in classes, they can show uh, students that they, there should be a respect for rules, for guidelines, and show that there are consequences for students' actions. All right, now um, I tried to mix the red color and the green color. If you mix those, you get a kind of yellow. Uh, this was the most easily seen yellow here. So this says there are certainly more arguments both for and against taking attendance at the university level. So here's the mix of um, uh, red and green together. So I'm sure um, listeners uh, will have some other reasons for and against taking a, attendance at university, and that's fine. These are some of the ones that I've uh, found in the literature and have um, come up with myself. So these are the typical arguments, and the question remains, should you take attendance at the university level? Well, there are probably policies to follow, especially in the East, like in Japan, where you're required to, but it also requires um, judgment calls. If attendance is deemed important by your institution, by your department, or if you find attendance is worthwhile, you should understand why, and you should explore and develop the best uh, attendance taking practices that you can. They may be different uh, for different classes, for different situations, but you should be aware. You should uh, teach yourself some of the different ways and some of the different reasons for or against the taking of attendance. Now, I'm going to give a few quick, brief methodologies here. They are by no means exhaustive. This is not an exhaustive list whatsoever, but I really want viewers to consider the pros and cons of the different methodologies. And again, consider uh, the students' uh, time constraints that you might have uh, both in and outside of the classroom. 
and any additional benefits. And I underline this. This is about, uh, you know, killing two birds with one stone. If you can find a way to take attendance, but at the same time, by doing so, you get some other additional benefit, then that gives you all the more reason to take attendance. All right. Now, let me uh, go through a quick uh, eight uh, different methodologies for taking attendance. Some of these can be done um, either uh, in the classroom or online. So for example, number one, you call roll. In the classroom, you have your uh, students list. You could at the beginning of class call out students' names. They say here. If there's no answer, then that student is absent. Of course, in semi-large classes, uh, one classmate's friend could say here for a student who is not present, um, so that's problematic. It is possible that you could call roll online, for example, during Zoom sessions. But again, what happens if a student is having technical difficulties? Um, when you're checking the participant list on Zoom, maybe just at that time, that student's Wi-Fi was knocked out, they couldn't uh, engage in the Zoom lesson, they're counted absent when actually they were only absent for maybe a minute or two. So I uh, do not really like calling roll in the classroom. I find that this is just a waste of time. There are more efficient ways to take attendance. You could use a seating chart um, in the classroom. I find that this is maybe more appropriate for pre-tertiary level uh, situations. At university, um, yeah, the students are adults or they're nearing um, official adulthood. To tell them where to sit does not promote autonomy in the classroom. And there may be situations where uh, Student A does not want to sit next to student B. They're going to be partners maybe f uh, during lessons, during class activities, uh, to tell them where to sit. Um, it's possible, but personal opinion, I don't find this to be the best way. You could have uh, an ID scanner. Several universities that I teach at, when students enter the class, they touch their ID card to a panel and it indicates that they're present. There are workarounds here as well. Um, one student could give their card to another student and <clears throat> they would be counted present when in fact the, they are absent. And of course um, the school would have to set up some sort of ID scanner system. They are not inexpensive. They are um, uh, not uh, in super common use yet. So this one is probably not an option for most situations. Number four, uh, a LMS, a learning management system or some kind of digital form. Um, uh, an LMS, I, I'm sure a lot of listeners know what it is. But for example, you might be familiar with uh, Blackboard. It's a way, it's an online um, system that can disseminate information to students enrolled in particular classes. My university, the LMS has a function whereby students can uh, click a, a radio button to say, yes, I'm, I attended class. Um, during the 2020 academic school year, several teachers did use like a, a Google Docs form for students to indicate, yes, um, I watched, <clears throat> excuse me, the on-demand videos or I did the assignments that I was supposed to uh, watch or do uh, for this particular class and they indicated as much. Okay, the LMS function, it's, it's been on my university uh, LMS uh, for quite a while, very much pre-pandemic. I find personally um, to just click a button to say here, 
um, you're not getting the, the killing two birds with one stone. And just by clicking a button, the student might not have watched the on-demand videos. They're saying they did, but it could be the case that in fact they did not. What does that mean? Well, if you're in the actual classroom and there's physical presence, then yes, uh, there's no way you can fake that John is in my class. I can see him sitting right there. Um, but when you're online, when you're uh, teaching remotely, then just clicking a button or filling out a form, um, it, 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 does, it doesn't truly indicate attendance. Um, number five, it's possible to task a student, a different student each class, for taking attendance. Um, for example, week three, you give your uh, the attendance, the student uh, role, the student list, to Mary and Mary on that day. It's her job to check that everyone is, is present during the class. This means that once the teacher walks in, to the classroom, they can immediately just start teaching class. You're tasking it to uh, the students in a rotation fashion. This is sort of nice because it's making the students become active participants in the class. They are working toward the class. The uh, minus, the, the demerit of this is that, well, the students <laughs> should be focusing on what the teacher is saying and getting the information from the lesson, not necessarily uh, having their attention divided by having to do something a little extraneous. So I don't particularly like this task. Six, <clears throat> uh, distributing name cards. For example, at the elementary school level, I know some teachers will have a goldfish bowl at the front of the classroom and all of the students names are written on uh, fish shaped pieces of paper so when the students come in they pick up the fish that has their name on it and they put it in the goldfish bowl kind of a cute way to take attendance the fish that are not in the bowl that means that those students are absent <clears throat> this um a similar method could be used at the university level. It would mean that the teacher would have to make uh, special cards uh, for the students and put and maybe put their names on them. And then um, the students would uh, put the cards maybe on their desk. They take it with them. Or there, there are different ways that you could sort of adapt that goldfish bowl uh, style for university classes. It's also possible to put the students' name cards randomly on different desks uh, at the beginning of each lesson. So just randomly go into uh, the, the class, go around the desks. When students come in, they have to find their name card on whatever desk it's put on, and then that's where they sit for the lesson. This is sort of nice because students uh, are mixing up all the time. They're not always sitting next to uh, <clears throat> a particular person. Um, but again, this sort of robs students of their autonomy. They, some students might want to sit next to another student because they get a good rapport going. Um, they, they are able to more easily share their understanding with another student in particular. So this method, it's, I think it's quite doable, but I would encourage instructors to find a, a, a best practice way in order to use these kinds of name cards. Uh, number seven, uh, constructed name cards. This is something that I'm going to talk about uh, in just a minute. And number eight as well, an attendance record sheet. I call it the R's. These are the two that I personally use in my own lessons. When in the classroom, that would be this one. And when I'm online teaching remotely, I use this one. 
Okay, so let me briefly talk about these. So number seven, constructed name cards. Long ago, I had written um, an article that explained about these name cards. And I used these name cards basically, number one, to be able to learn students' names. But I quickly realized that I could also take attendance, which is required for me for my courses. So I was getting a uh, a kill two birds with one stone uh, feature. So my name cards, I got um, three uses. I killed three birds. Number one, I I have this uh, paper set up, kind of like um, drawing paper. It's relatively thick. I would hand these out to the students. On the front, they would write their first name. During classes, because they're set up like this, on their desks, I could quickly learn names. And if I've forgotten a name, I could say, hey, so-and-so, could you please answer this question? Instead of saying, you know, hey, you, I could just read the name. On the back, I could have some sort of space. Students could give me a self-introduction. Uh, do they have what pets they have, what their favorite food is. I could get information, their student's number, what class. The teacher is what would I, keeps these name cards after every lesson. Okay, But at the beginning of the lesson, <clears throat> the, the teacher would put, um, I would put uh, the stack of name cards. Students enter the class, they go sit down. When class starts, if I see there are two name cards not taken, I know those two students are absent. During the lesson, I will know that one student has not taken two name cards because I will count the number of name cards I have and check it against my student role. So I'll know, okay, there's something's not matching or something is matching. So that's number two name, attendance, and on the inside, on the inside of the this name card, I would have something set up like this. At the end of every lesson, students could make memos. They could write one main lesson topic. There might be three things that the class engaged in, three different areas, okay. I would tell students, just write one thing. Uh, this is lesson one, lesson two, etc. Just write one thing that you learned and then some specific information. So maybe class four, they learned some new vocabulary. They would write new vocabulary. Then they might write what those words mean. Okay, maybe in lesson seven, they learned about communication strategies. Okay, what was the strategy specifically? If the students do this uh, correctly as uh, they're taught and instructed, then before the final exam, students could look at their name card and get a refresher. Oh yes, this class nine, lesson nine, we learned this. This might show up on the exam or Obviously, this topic is important. This is something that I want to make sure I don't forget. Okay, and of course, once the, the course is finished, I don't need to keep these name cards. I would not keep. Students would take these name cards home with them and hopefully keep for quite a while. <clears throat> uh, finally, number eight. This is the attendance record sheet that I made um, for my online classes in academic year 2020. I call it the R's for short. I had done a, a video presentation that explains the R's. Um, this should be available to viewers if you wanted to see this uh, actual explanation. But the reason I came up with this attendance record sheet, this R's, is honestly, there's quite little teacher-student communication in typical classroom situations. In my case, um, I'm often rushing to a course, um, 
and then I have to rush out because I have somewhere else to go. Um, so there's not much time to talk to students. Students often do not come to my office hours. And I thought going into the online uh, remote teaching and learning at the beginning of the uh, pandemic in 2020, I thought it might be even worse online. I'm not physically in the same space as the students. Students will probably uh, feel isolated. There's a very new newness to this situation and there's a danger of just monotony at home. There's no interaction with the with the with their teacher as much as there is normally. I thought there must be a way to kill two birds with one stone. How could I have this uh, teacher student communication remotely, but also um, find a way to take attendance? Uh, that's why I came up with what I call the R's. This sheet here, this uh, slide shows the entire R's sheet uh, by itself. Let me show you just the top half and then the bottom half. Here is the top half. Basically, here's the explanation. Every week we have lessons. Students are to send me an attendance record sheet. I explain exactly how I want them to name, rename their R's, uh, when to send it to me. Here's the bottom half. Okay, here is identifying information of the student, lesson day, then these three boxes are the important boxes. In this box, students are to write what they learned in that lesson. So if they had a remote lesson where they watched an on-demand video, uh, they should write, well, I watched an on-demand video about such and such a topic. Okay, this way I would know that even though we are distanced, that I know that the students are on target with the lessons they're supposed to be engaged in. And it was the case um, in academic year 2020, a student watched the wrong video for the week. That meant that when we got to Zoom and did a question answer and a uh, uh, students understanding check that they're going to have <laughs> they've done different uh, lessons they're going to have different knowledge different information from what's going to be discussed on zoom so this was a nice way to check students were on target if something from a uh, lesson was fun or difficult they could tell me if there was something fun, I could try to include that in later lessons. If something were difficult, I could uh, try to, to uh, find ways to alleviate those problems. And then this was sort of an open space. If a student had a question, if they had a comment, if they're saying, uh, if they're having computer difficulties or something, they can let me know every week they have to turn in this R's, so every week I'm getting communication from the students. Okay, so I really uh, enjoyed using the R's. Um, I'm currently doing some other research with R's use during academic year 2020. Uh, that's going to be a, a little in depth uh, about how the students engaged with the R's. Okay. Now, through this R's though, I could check attendance, I could check students were following directions, I could check students' awareness of lesson topics, I could get feedback from students, and I could address identified students' needs because they would email me their R's uh, responses. I'm socially distancing and at home pretty much all day, they would get a near immediate response to any problems or difficulties, so it was very timely. From the feedback, I could modify my lessons as needed, and it helped me to reflect on my teaching, which I was doing uh, for the first time remotely, just like most teachers were doing. Okay, so um, 
attendance here we are in closing attendance it is important uh, for many people for me for example uh, attendance is required maybe attendance is important for you or for your department or your institution or um, just for your situation in general again there's a certain amount of accountability um, maybe to an institution maybe to parents etc etc if you decide that you want to take attendance or you need to take attendance my my biggest takeaway that I want to give to you is can you kill two or more birds with your attendance taking methodology with whatever procedure you use to take attendance don't just let it be about attendance try to make it be about something else about skills about reflection on learning something so please I ask consider what was explained here in this video and explore various attendance taking methods do uh, some online searches for example there are more ways to take attendance than it are explained here talk to your uh, colleagues they might have some methods that they use um, that maybe you can uh, uh, use or adopt or adapt for your own courses i know personally a lot of uh, of my colleagues they are they are impressed with that uh, name card the folded name card that i use for three purposes and uh, i know at least uh, two or three uh, colleagues they've uh, used that same system because i introduced it okay so please explore please try and um i in here at the end here i want to thank you very much for watching this video for listening uh to this uh discussion about attendance here is my uh, contact information if you would like to discuss attendance or get in touch with me um please do okay again thank you very much for listening it's very appreciated